Hey, hey, welcome to another SVJ tutorial. My name is Matt, and today we're going to be learning about how to create these really cool stroke loaders. And I'm going to demonstrate for you how to create one of these, and then you can use the same principles to create any number of variations. All right, should be pretty fun. So uh, let's go ahead and get loaded up. All right, so first things first is we want to start a new project. And we want our canvas size to, let's go ahead and click that, make sure it's uh, linked. We want this to be 2100 by 2100 square. So let's go ahead and create that for our canvas size. So we have this 2100 by 2100 square for our composition. And let's go ahead and add a color to this. We're going to come over here to our color property and we're going to add a fill. And we're going to go with like a dark, a slate gray, really dark, not quite black, but definitely dark. All right. So we have our fill here in our composition. Now we want to go ahead and we want to add um, a square. So this is going to act like a guide for us because um, we need some margins and then we're going to put that, um, they make that kind of uh, four by four, um, quad composition here. So let's go ahead and get uh, a rectangle and let's make the rectangle. We're going to link this because we want to make another square. We're going to make this 1740. 1740 by 1740. And let's go ahead and switch the fill to a stroke. And let's go ahead and line that up so it's centered in our composition. So we come up here to a line. I'm going to hit center and then center it vertically and then center it horizontally. And then I'm going to center the anchor point. So it's right smack dab in the middle. So this is our grid or our guideline. So this is our margin on the outside. And I can lock this for now. And now what I want to do is I want to make those four windows. So I'm going to grab my rectangular tool and just click. And again, I want the size of this one to be 780 square. And I'm going to hit that center tool and I'm just going to line it up. So I want to make sure that right now that I have this clicked on, this is my snap two. So I want to make sure it's snapping to my guideline. So I have this one in my top left. So I'm going to call this rectangle one. And then I can do a number of things. I can either hold command and hit the D keystroke on my keyboard. So that would make a duplicate. So I've made a duplicate of this, or I can select this and holding the alt or option key. I can click and drag out a duplicate and then again, holding the alt or option key, drag out another duplicate. All right. So several ways to do that. So this one I want on my, t on the top, this is number two, rectangle two. These are squares. They're not rectangles. What am I talking about? Square. Four. And square back to square one. All right. So I got my four squares and we're not quite the right color. So let's go ahead and select all of these. And let's come back down here. And I'm going to change this color back down to something about like that. Not as dark as the background, but fairly subtle. And we can go ahead and get rid of this rectangle guy. We don't need that anymore. So we can delete that. All right. So now we have kind of our windows here and they're nicely spaced out. And so we got a nice margin around the outside. I can make, select all these and put them in a group. And I can call this background. And I can go ahead and lock the background. So we're locked in place. We won't be messing with that for a while. All right, so now let's get on to the animation. All right, what you guys have all been waiting for. 
Let's go ahead and adjust our timeline. So we're going to move it back to one and a half seconds. So one and a half seconds. So this is a pretty quick animation. And I'm going to start with this loader. And this is going to be the only one that I show you. And after I show you how to do this one, uh, I trust all of you can go ahead and create the rest of them using these same principles. So what I'm going to do is I want to put on my guide. So I'm going to do a front, let's do a front grid. And I'm going to zoom in here. And uh, once I have that, I want to make sure that my snap to is snap to grid, because that's going to help me out as I create this first one. So I'm going to click this on snap to grid. So now my points are going to snap to this grid. I'm going to use the pen tool. And I'm going to start here at this point in my grid. And what I want to do is I want to have these anchor points evenly spaced out. So I'm going to, and I want 12 of them. So I'm going to click, and then I want to be right in the center of this square on this grid. Click again, click again. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This part is a little bit tedious, but once we get going, uh, I think you guys will enjoy this. So now what I want to do is I want to select every other anchor point. So I'm selecting every other anchor point here. And now, and I'm doing that, I am selecting one and holding the shift key so I can select multiples. And still holding the shift key now, I'm going to use my up arrow. And I'm going to hit the up arrow one, two, three. Let's go. Let's go four times. Hit that up arrow four times. All right. And now let's select all the remaining anchor points. Because now I want to round these anchor points out. And so I'm going to come over here to where it says type. And right now I have, um, I guess, these straight or angular points. I want to round this out. So I'm going to click on this second one here. And that's automatically going to round these out. So it's a nice kind of hill. And all of these should be the same. So this is what we're looking for. This is what we want. Um, but we can get rid of these two ending anchor points. So I'm going to use my pen tool and I'm going to do the remove node tool. Once I click on that, I can get rid of this point and I can get rid of that point. So it's going to start up here and end down here. That's what my stroke loader is going to do. Now, I want this stroke to be thicker, so I want to do 26 points here. Nice, we have a nice thick stroke there. And I also want to round out the ends, so I don't want them to have the butt cap, but I want a rounded cap. There we go. All right, so we have that, and so we can go ahead and get rid of our guide now. I'm going to click off the guide. I don't need that anymore. And what I want to do now is I'm going to unlock this background because I want to center this. So I'm going to center my path with my first square. And so I'm going to go to the line. I'm going to center it vertically and horizontally. There we go. Now I can go ahead and lock this back up. So this is going to be wave path. And this is going to be my background path. All right. So, and maybe we can actually call this, let's call this, didn't mean to move that. Let's call that wave background, just so it's a little bit more clear. All right, wave background. Let's go ahead and change the color to, um, let's select this color and then go a little bit lighter. Not too, it's got to be pretty subtle. I think something like that. That looks pretty good. All right, now I can use this wave path background to duplicate for my wave path that's gonna animate through here. And I'm gonna make three of those. So I'm just gonna start off with one for right now. So this is gonna be wave dash one. All right, so wave dash one is in there. What I wanna do is I want to start animating the offset stroke. So a stroke offset is what I want to animate. So I'm going to start with a keyframe here. 
And I want to make sure that my offset is 600 to start with. And I'm going to start with a dash of 350, comma, 250, 250. All right, and let's go ahead and change the color so we can see what we're doing. We're going to go with like a yellowish green. Kind of something up in here, this range. Nice and bright. So there we go. So we have our first stroke. And by animating the stroke offset, it's going to move through this. So we want to come down here on our timeline. We want to move to the end. And we just want to make this offset zero. All right. So now if I play that, it's going to move a stroke like so. Perfect. All right. So it's not too complicated. Our offset is just driving this one stroke uh, through the other. Cool. So what we need to do now is do two more of these. So we're going to have a duplicate of this. So I'm going to do command D and I'm going to call this wave two. All right. Now I have wave two, and let's go ahead and change the color of wave two so we can actually, yeah, sure. And wave two is gonna be something like, let's go something like that. All right, this is wave two. And wave two is gonna be a bit shorter than wave one. So we wanna do 200 here. And we wanna do 400 right here. So our Dash is 200 and our gap is 400. Our offset is still 600. So we're going to see that this is now a little bit shorter than our first one. So now we have two strokes animating through there. Great. Perfect. And if you want to, if you need a little bit more contrast, you can change that color a little bit and pull it out there. Perfect. All right, so we just have one more to do, wave number three. So again, Command-D, I've duplicated wave number two. This is gonna be wave number three. And wave number three is even shorter than the rest. Let's go ahead and pick a color. We're gonna come something bright, maybe a little bit darker. Boom, right there. And wave number three is a short one, 100 for our dash, and then 500 for our gap. Cool, now I can play those through. Hey yo, look at that. Obviously you can change the colors to whatever you want. Um, so if you wanted some different colors in here to add more contrast, you could go ahead and do that, but there we go. So this principle, obviously you saw how easy that is to do you can do that to recreate all the other uh, stroke loaders that were in this example. But not only that, you can recreate awesome pieces of work like what's on the SVJator Instagram. This same effect being used in a really cool way to animate, obviously a letter and also this pattern around the outside. So there's really, really cool ways that you can use the same effect to create some really cool animations. All right, I think that about wraps it up for us here at SVJator. Thank you for tuning in to this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And we look forward to seeing how you guys use the software to create your own works of art. So please send in your stroke loaders uh, to SVJator at their Instagram account and let us know what you're up to. All right, stay tuned for more uh, tutorials to come. Until then, take care. All right, bye.